grounds for Kate. Take it right up to her. Yeah, and don't stop to read it on the way. How can a dog read a telegram? Yeah, he'd probably have trouble getting it out of the envelope. Mercy, get on the train. Open it, Mom. Yes, go ahead. Well, well, I will. For goodness sakes, I never saw so much excitement. You'd think I'd never gotten a tele... On the floor. Oh, thank you. Go ahead, read it. I will, as soon as I find my glasses. Try looking for them on your nose. <laughs> Dear Kate, arriving tomorrow morning to spend a few days at your hotel, as ever, Ralph Denton. Oh, isn't that nice? Well, back to work. Ralph Denton's an old friend. Say, wasn't he that fellow that was sweet on you way back? Yes. He was one of hundreds. <laughs> now, if anybody is interested in helping their mother, you'll find her turning the mattress in number five. Shh. What do you want, Uncle Joe? You mean you didn't notice? Notice what? The way your mom acted when she read that telegram from Ralph Denton. She acted pleased, if that's what you mean. That was just to put us off guard. Why would she want to do that? It's obvious you two girls don't understand women. It ain't normal for a woman to act normal. Oh, <laughs> Uncle Joe. Sure, oh, Uncle Joe. Your mom may have looked calm to you, but I could see her true feelings. Her goosebumps gave her away. Come on, Betty Joe. let's help Mom with the mattress. Say, what was Ralph's sister's name? Mabel. Wonder if she ever got married. She was always showing up when she wasn't wanted, like a cat at a fish fry. She sounds keen. So now, after all these years, old Ralph's finally coming back. That's it. His sister's finally gotten married. Now he's free to woo your mom. No one's on the porch. We can talk here. What about? Well, Ralph Denton's doing an hour, and Mom's still puttering in the kitchen. So? Look, stupid, if you were expecting an old flame, wouldn't you be excited fussing around and getting dressed up? I don't know. If the old flame were Sandy Koufax? <laughs> oh, sure, I see what you mean. <laughs> that Uncle Joe was wrong about Ralph Denton. No, just the opposite. Well, he's got to be right sometime. <laughs> Mom's pretending she's not interested because of us. That's Mom, always thinking of herself last. This time she's going to get things her way whether she likes it or not. <laughs> what is that stuff? Some of Billy Joe's best perfume. It's called impossible. It smells impossible, too. <laughs> it's called impossible because one whiff and you're impossible to resist. I don't need all this nonsense. Ralph Denton is just an old friend. Yes, we know. It's the old friends that need convincing because they know you better. <laughs> Shouldn't Mom be wearing earrings? Before breakfast? Hey, Joe, you gotta stop reading those paperbacks. How about just one earring? Let Ralph know you got something more on your mind besides pancakes. I have no more on my mind. Right. How about one for the road? Kate. Ralph. Ralph! Oh, I'm sorry, Mabel. Kate, you remember my sister, Mabel? Oh, of course. How are you, Mabel? How do you do? Where's your husband? Husband? I've never married. Guess you missed the boat. <laughs> Joe. Uh, Ma Mabel, uh, 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 Ralph, uh, please say hello to Bobby Joe and Betty Joe. And, of course, you've met Uncle Joe. Yes. <laughs> Well, uh, what are we all standing here for? Let's all go up to the hotel and have some breakfast. Yes, I'm starved. How about you, Mabel? Well, I'm not too hungry. I've heard that one before. Uncle Joe. Oh, not from her. See, there was this widow woman up in Pixley. I used to take out once in a while. She... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> As I remember, you were always partial to pancakes. Yeah, well, it's been so long since I've tasted any of your delicious pancakes. That... Uh, Ralph, you know what pancakes do to you. Kate's pancakes are different than anybody else's. So is Ralph's stomach. <laughs> well, maybe you can fill up on sausages. Sausages give Ralph heartburn. <laughs> oh. Well, 
Perhaps fried eggs will make him bilious. Can he handle water? Where's the kitchen? I'll fix something for Ralph to eat. Oh, Betty Jo, would you take Miss Denton and... and show her the kitchen? Would you like to see your room, Ralph? Yes, yes, I would. Hey, that's delicious perfume you're wearing, Kate. Oh, can you smell it? I just barely have a drop on. Ralph? Remember your allergy. What would I do without Mabel? Why don't you try it sometime? Ralph, I know you're just going to love your room. Oh, it's just the way I pictured it, Kate. Nice, clean, pleasant. Well, takes a man of taste to appreciate things like that. But then, as I recall, you always did have too much. Uh, Ralph can't stand a draft. He has a cold every other week. <laughs> Come along, Ralph. Your cereal's ready. Mabel insists on cooking all my meals. Wasn't that a problem when you were in the service? I took an apartment right near his base. It was Mabel's idea. I'll bet. What? I'll bet it worked out just fine. <laughs> it certainly did. When we were discharged, we were a captain. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I call a moon. That's funny. That's what we call it, too. What's going on? They're actually alone. Where's the bloodhound? She went to her room to freshen up. <laughs> She'll be real fresh by the time she gets out. We locked her door from the outside. Be careful of that, Bobby Joe. You might drop that. <laughs> now poor Mabel will be stuck in her room all night. Oh, none of your city smog or fog at the Shady Rest. Just pure country air. Ah, it does feel good. Living out here adds 10 years to a person's life, according to Tuck Carberry. Who's he? A neighbor. He's 92. Oh, <laughs> I guess any man of 92 ought to know what he's talking about. His father's even smarter. <laughs> my door was stuck. It's a lucky thing I had my keys with me. Oh, Mabel has been collecting pass keys for years. <laughs> Bobby Joe, I told you to break the key off in the lock. But I didn't it wouldn't have done any good. Mabel could probably just stare at the doorknob and melt it. <laughs> Won't you join us, Mabel? Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Oh, Mabel, just breathe this nice, clean air. Well, they say that the best air is in the Yellowstone National Park. That's where Ralph and I are going after we leave here. Mabel has every minute of our vacation planned. Sounds like fun. Oh, my goodness, it's 10 o'clock. A vacation's no good if you don't get enough sleep to enjoy it. I agree with you, Mabel. Good night. Oh, not me. I could stay up all night. It's Ralph who needs his rest. Poor boy works so hard all year. Well, I guess I am a little tired. Good night, ladies. Good night, Ralph. Kate. Hmm? Do you still like fishing? Oh, yes. Well, why don't we go tomorrow? Oh, I'd love it. So would I. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Don't forget your nose drops, Ralph. Two in each nostril. Why don't you live a little, Ralph, and take three in each nostril? <laughs> After all, it is your vacation. <laughs> I told you she had a wonderful sense of humor, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Can't you figure out some way to keep her out of the way so Mom can go fishing alone with Mr. Denton? I could steal her broom. <laughs> Joe, come on, think. Well, now, Mabel's the type of woman who wouldn't do something if she knew you wanted her to do it. But if you didn't want her to do it, she would. So all I've got to do is figure out what I don't want her to do, and she'll do it. And that's what I'm going to do. See how simple it is? <laughs> this is Mr. Denton's. Thank you. This is yours, Mom. Thank you. And this is hers. Now, baby. Ralph will baby. be through with your cereal in just a minute. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've never been fishing before. Oh, it's a lot of fun. Walking through mud, fighting off mosquitoes, tearing your dress on brambles. Have you ever had poison ivy? Thank you, Betty Jo. <laughs> what are you... Shh! I bet you can't guess what I got here, Kate. What? A Sunday go-to-meeting outfit I picked up at Sam Drucker's. Your what? Yeah, I got just what you told me. I told you? A flat jacket, green shirt, pink trousers, orange socks, and a pink tie. 
the pink tie goes with the trousers. <laughs> he figured something conservative would be more appropriate. I was lucky to have her advise me, or I might have picked out something real loud. Joe, could I see you outside for a minute? Oh, you don't need to worry, Kate. These colors are even better in the sun. Do you really think these colors go together? They will once they're on my back. <laughs> Uncle Joe, would you please come... I was going to figure out a fake tie with fused polka dots until Kate set me straight on this stuff. Do you think it'll work? Shh. Pink tie with fused polka dots. Yeah, it sure pays to read the Pixley fashion notes, don't it, Kate? <laughs> Joe, there's something out on the porch I want to show you. <laughs> now, I don't mean to interfere, Joseph, but you simply cannot wear anything like that outfit anywhere. Well, why not? I wore one like it last year. Kate picked that one out, too. Let's see, there was an orange and black check jacket, uh -huh. banana trousers, uh -huh. a green shirt, uh -huh. and a yellow-blue striped tie. <laughs> Uncle Joe. What's the matter, Mabel? Are you, are you implying there's something wrong with my new outfit? No offense, Kate, but I think he should take these things back to the store and exchange them. He hasn't worn them. You have to have a lot of help to get Sam Drucker to take these back today, wouldn't you, Kate? Well, uh, that's just like you men. You can make a living, but unless there's a strong-willed woman behind you, anyone can take advantage. Well, you wouldn't catch Kate tangling with Sam Drucker, right, Kate? Well, uh, storekeepers are all basically alike. You just have to handle them subtly and with grace and tact. You know, Mabel, I never realized before the big difference between some of our local women and a woman of the world. Well, travel does expose one to good taste and an awareness of style. Oh, say, Mabel, you don't suppose you could spare the time to come into Hooterville with me and stand by my side while I talk to Sam Drucker? Well, I... No, no, you'd better not. Sam Drucker would twist you around like taffy, Mabel. I doubt that. <laughs> when is the next train to Hooterville? <laughs> You went on the next train to... The train won't be here for a long time yet. I may not know how to run a hotel, but I sure can call trains. Just what kind of an outfit did you have in mind for me, Mabel? Well, I thought perhaps a black jacket and uh, charcoal trousers. Charcoal? Wouldn't I get dust all over the furniture when I sit down? Don't panic, Kate Bradley. There must be a simple answer to all this. <laughs> oh, uh, did you ever do this in the city, Mr. Denton? Yes, it's very good for your eyes. <laughs> Oh, oh, Mom, we were just showing Mr. Denton and I exercise. Uh, Kate, wh where's Mabel? Oh, well, she... Oh, she... Mom, thanks for sewing that brand new dress for me. Mom makes all our clothes. That's nice. Where's Mabel? She Mom, wouldn't... did you get that medal yet? Mom took first prize at the county fair for the best apple pie. <laughs> just something I whipped up in between paint and the kitchen. Well, uh, where is Mabel? She went into Hooterville with Uncle Joe. I thought she wanted to go fishing. Well, well you know women, Mr. Denton, always changing their minds. <laughs> well, I'll go fix us a snack. Oh, well, Mom, can... how many lunches are you going to pack? Huh? You already packed one and put it behind the counter. I did. <laughs> cook, cook, cook. We just can't get her out of the kitchen. Ooh. Ooh. Right. There's enough food here to keep us out till dark, isn't there? I don't doubt it. I'll go get the fishing poles. You'll only need two. May I go? before Mr. Drucker's store is closed. Oh, we will. Uh, we will do everything possible to fix the cannonball as quick as possible. <laughs> will it be much longer? It looks like the flim jam has banged against the shrill bowl and plum shot the grizzle blink all to heck, ma'am. <laughs> that don't sound too bad, Charlie. <laughs> How can the flim jam bang again? We're just helping Joe. Oh. <laughs> the flange rod's leaning against the zitz braille. Oh, dear. We're in a hurry, Charlie. Charlie, I've been working the cannonball as long as you, 
And I never knew we had a flange rod or... I told you we're just helping Joe out. Helping him out of what? It's a secret. Why ain't I in on a secret? <laughs> Last time I told you a secret, before I could get home, it was in the newspaper, and they were broadcasting it over the radio. <laughs> Some secrets won't keep as long as others. Besides, I'm worried about that flange rod. We ain't got a flange rod. What's it doing leaning up against that zitz braille? We ain't got a zitz braille or a flange rod, and the flim jam ain't banged up against the shrill hole. Then our grizzle blink ain't shot to heck, is it? <laughs> Can it be when we haven't got any? Abel, are you sure purple and green stripes don't go too good with banana trousers? <laughs> you then come. You think she'll get angry? She'll get over it on her honeymoon. <laughs> I never saw a man catch so many fish at one time. Well, I guess I did all right. Oh, don't be modest, Ralph. You ought to write a book on fishing. <laughs> oh, I guess Mabel must be up in her room. What happened? I don't know. Must have blown a fuse. <laughs> Where are you, Kate? Over here at the coffee table. We usually have some matches here. Where's the coffee table? Uh... Right here. <laughs> there you are. Oh. Candles. Yes, so uh, we keep them here in case of an emergency. Where's the fuse box? I'll check it. It's down, just down the hall. <laughs> I said, no, don't bother about the fuse. I'll fix it in the morning. <laughs> a bottle of wine. <laughs> oh, you're prepared for any emergency, aren't you? Yes, sir. Uh, a lot of strange things pop up around here. Shall I get some glasses? No, no, sit down, Ralph. I got a feeling that there are some real handy. <laughs> Thank you. So do your daughters. And yeah, there are a lot of laughs. <laughs> I certainly uh, enjoyed spending the day with you, Kate. <laughs> yes, it, um, it, it was fun talking over old times, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, Kate, there's something that I've been wanting to say. Finally, this seems to be a moment to say it. Yes, Ralph? When two people, I mean, uh, a man and a woman, I mean, when the right man beats the right woman. Anybody here? <laughs> oh! The train broke down. We had to walk all the way back. Well, it must be one of those days. We blew a fuse. Oh! Never did get to Sam Drucker's. Guess we'll have to go back again tomorrow. Oh, oh sure. Ralph, bedtime. Oh, right. <laughs> Kate, it was a lot of fun. Yes, it was, Ralph. Oh, it... excuse me. Remember, Ralph, two in each nostril. <laughs> I'm not sitting here all day. I I'd like to pick berries or, or just start right back to the hotel. Say, picking berries. Mabel, that sounds like fun. <laughs> My goodness. Picking berries is certainly hard work, isn't it, Joseph? It ain't easy, Mabel. <laughs> Four days of keeping that woman busy. I'll tell you, Medicare came in just in time. <laughs> It'll all be worthwhile, Uncle Joe. Mr. Denton's on the verge. Somebody better give him a push before my feet collapse. <laughs> Every time that dang train breaks down, Mabel's got me out hiking, picking berries, looking for shiny rocks. She'd make Davy Crockett holler, Uncle. <laughs> oh, pardon me. Uh, Mr. Carson. Mr. Carson, could I, uh, could I see you alone for a minute? 
I'll be out in the lobby. Sure, sure, I'll be right in. Uncle Joe, he's got that marrying look in his eye. When he asks your permission to marry Mom, don't tell him yes right away. I don't need no advice. Get me my shoes and socks. Man can't discuss a solemn occasion like this in his bare feet. <laughs> I don't know exactly how to say this, but, you know, sometimes the idea of marriage comes late in life to certain people. Yes, I guess it does. But it only takes a few days of constant exposure to each other, and some people can make up their minds uh, real fast. Don't you agree? Yep, I sure do. That's what made America great. <laughs> now, I know how close you are to Kate. You think she'd approve? Well, now, I'll tell you, Ralph. Uh, at a time like this, a man in my position is supposed to hem and haw and keep you on tenterhooks. But I believe in being direct. I don't know of anything that would please Kate more. <laughs> That's just what I wanted to hear. Well, I guess I'll clear the table. Oh, no, 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 that, that can wait. I have something I want to say. Uh, I'm not very good at making speeches, but, well, all I want to say is that, I don't know, it must have been fate that led me here to Shady Rest Hotel after all these years to see Kate. Through the years, I often thought... Now, we all know what you want to say, so get to the point. Well, all I want to say is that there's going to be a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Naturally, I'm in favor of it, and I've talked to Mabel, and she... I'm happy to announce the betrothal of my sister Mabel to Mr. Joe Carson. <laughs> 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 I want you to know that I intend to be the best wife and berry picker any man ever had. <laughs> well, I guess I'll clear the table. <laughs> what are you up to? I'm executing Plan B. Plan B? I put it in operation when Plan A backfired on me. <laughs> you right, telling the girls that Ralph Denton came here to marry me. You got caught in your own web, but running away isn't the answer. I ain't looking for answers. I'm looking for distance. <laughs> John, we will find a way to call off the wedding. Oh, fine. And while you're figuring it out, you can reach me, RFD Guatemala. <laughs> no relative of mine was ever a coward. Shake hands with a pioneer. <laughs> Don't try to stop me, I'm leaving. Would you like to see me stuck with Mabel for the rest of my life? <laughs> oh, go chase a cat. Miss <laughs> Hunter. You going someplace? Guatemala. <laughs> I guess we sort of got rushed into things, didn't we, Joe? Oh, I don't blame yourself, Mabel. You ain't the first one to fall heir to my irresistibility. <laughs> Joe, I can't think of another man in the world I'd rather marry. If I loved him, I'll never see a berry or a mountain without thinking of you. <laughs> Junction. This has been a Filmways presentation.